That's awful. No. Oh God, that's well, awful. It tastes wow. good though. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls Tuesday. Yeah. It is Iron GM tonight. Who is going to win? Who will fall? Who will fail? I think there's a song about that, but I have no idea what it is. Uh, and I'm not going to continue going on with that. Now, normally I let these fine folks introduce themselves uh, when I damn well please. And I think we'll go ahead and continue this right now. If you, I am Kyle. I am the DM of the Cred Campaigns on Thursdays, but I'm famous. You know who I am. So let's let's ignore that. Next person I'm going to introduce uh, is in everything. And when I say everything, I mean he is everywhere. He's like Santa Claus mixed with or, the director of the CIA. Or Elvis. Uh, yeah. Or Elvis, yeah. I saw Elvis in a UFO. He's too good for the <laughs> human race. Nice. Uh, David, what? Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I assume that's he, That's me he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm David. I am usually uh, a regular here on Between the Rolls, but hey, if you'd like to take our spot, any of our spots, just feel free. Uh, you can contact us. Uh, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you can find me on the uh, Cacophony episodes every other Thursday, and then every other Saturday on the Calamity campaign. I play Zadar in Cacophony and Ingve in Calamity A, and then Crow in Calamity B. So every once in a while, you'll catch me on a one shot. So, yep, that's me. That's Dave. That's Dave. I, yeah, I guess I am in everything. <laughs> Hi, Janelle. <laughs> I have no idea who you're talking about. Uh, how <laughs> dare you uh, uh, start talking to random people who do not exist whatsoever <laughs> uh, at all. They don't so exist. Weird yeah. and such. The next person I'd like to introduce is, of course, Rob. You all know him as Dave. Dave, but not Dave. But not I, that Dave. The other Dave. <laughs> Rob, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about more. Uh, I'm Rob, and as previously stated, I played Dave on the Calamity campaign because I like to make things go squish! Um, other than that, um, sometimes you can catch me on a one-shot. My life's a disaster, and you can find me at Cthulhu Rob on Twitter. Oddly enough, not on my Cthulhu-inspired campaign. but That'd be too um, obvious. Yeah, That's that would have been that would have been too like much of a low, coincidence. That that would have been the low hanging fruit. You know, so. <laughs> All right, guys. Before we get in tonight, we got to go through the spiel. You can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archives. If you'd like to instead listen to us instead of looking at all of our handsome faces, uh, I would like to introduce this group as the shiny headed group tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! The baldies are out. <laughs> Shaved, shaved head. It's a choice. Not for me. <laughs> Lean forward oh, again, Kyle. Lean forward. What? It's yeah, a choice. yeah, yeah. It's a choice. It's, it's a, a choice. choice. It's a choice. It's, it's a choice right there in front. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to look at our faces, you can listen to our podcast and listen to audio only stuff. Uh, if you want to buy some really cool, awesome sweat, well, we'll get to that in a moment, Rob. But there's a pattern it's not chaotic otherwise i completely lose stream and then i'm just looking at squirrels and that's that's a problem Squirrel. 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 Off the rails. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to buy some cool swag you can also click a link to our store where you can buy some awesome cred merchandise uh even cooler calamity stuff or if you're just a plain old murder hobo who just wants to stab somebody in the back We've got you covered there, too, whether you want us staring at you in the shower curtain or from your duvet cover on your California king size mattress, which honestly is a lot of bed for just one person. You must feel lonely. I just got to say that that uh, cred logo is pretty damn dope. It is. Carol does a good job, even if she does take forever to do it. Nice. <laughs> uh, Carol's not Chapel, watching. Yada, yada. 
Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors real quick, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like crap. Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, you do have to mention before if you're a DM or if you're a player. That way she knows which way to weigh the dies. For example, mm -hmm. my players all roll natural ones all the time. It's great. Um, they're perfect failures in my story, and the monsters are going to kill them. Uh, and finally, if your game does stink, Oddfish Games has Adventure Sense. Uh, anything from ancient libraries. Here it is. Oh, that Ooh, looks Blooming like Prairies. Blooming Prairie. Oh, that's a good one. Why didn't I? I got Putrid Sewers. Why didn't I get Blooming Prairies? I got here's Rubber on the Road and here's Putrid Sewers. I'm ready to run an urban campaign. Let me tell you that right now. Nice. I smell like it too. Let me tell you. <laughs> you might need to send me that putrid sewers for my adventure tonight. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> finally, uh, they also do the Shine Project. If you're looking to write a story of fantastical proportions or maybe just a dreary, drab, uh, uh, gumshoe story. Honestly, the Shine Project works for both of them, asking those specific questions that really get the brain juices flowing. <laughs> and finally, uh, really awesome news, How to RPG with Your Cat has gone live on Kickstarter. Head on over there, support them. It's awesome. Your cats need to play D&D too. That's, that's what the tabaxi are for. Um, unless you're Carol, in which case probably keep the cats as far away as her game as possible i think that is about it for the usual stuff uh this week we do not have any open games normally we would tell you to go ahead and hit up imhobo inc at gmail.com or on twitter if you want to join in on an open game we don't have anything this week uh but if you hit us up this week we'll get you scheduled in for some time next week during one of those one shots because this week we have the cred campaign on Thursday. We'll figure out what the players are going to do after the mess of going into the lava tubes of Farzin. Uh, Gen Con is this weekend, and on Friday you will see Adventures in Philbar slash okay. Murder Hobo Inc. there with uh, an urban investigation. It may be hmm. big night. It's a thinker, guys, so, you know, if you're not up for it, if your player can barely open a door, you may... Nah, I'd go ahead and sign up for it now if you have to. Dave got this. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Speaking of Dave, Dave is showing up in Calamity, as well as David and his... One... Oh, my goodness. Which one of your characters is the main Calamity character? Zadar. Ingve. Ingve. Zadar. Zadar? Calamity. Oh, oh, Calamity is... A yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to say. Ingve. Oh, okay. okay. No, I thought you were leading up to the recap. So, and, and sorry. I'm in so much stuff. No, I'm just previewing oh, this week's Dave content. I'm previewing this... <laughs> I can't handle myself today, guys. And You're that is why job. on Sunday, the Margu campaign is doing the B side of things. And... If you think I can't handle things, then <laughs> you, you should watch the Margu guys. But that's enough of this week. Bruce. We got to talk about last week before we get to Iron DM. And let's go ahead, David, and start with Cacophony. 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 Yes. Uh, Cacophony. Well, we picked up where we um, yeah left off. It was really uneventful. Uh, we... Uh, after that harrowing fight with uh, yeah the local wildlife, uh, I believe it was an owl there, we uh, uh, woke up <laughs> to, uh, yes, our friend waking us up in the middle of a field. Apparently the sanctuary that we threw up, well, that threw up, but that we put up <laughs> uh, had uh, expired and we, and we wake in a very pastoral field. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, everything else is about a trek up to a volcano at this point. So that is our destination. If you hadn't seen the episode last time, we have a package to deliver with the object of the destruction of Telosia in a mysterious box from Mortimer J. Steen. 
given the assignment to throw this into this active volcano, destroy these two objects, world will be saved. Everybody can go home. And uh, yeah, it didn't end up that way, folks. So Zadar Maurice, I did remember his name, our space cowboy. So uh, yeah, Maurice, <laughs> Camille, and Zadar begin their trek up the side of the volcano. And they, they do it, you know, with relative uh, not so much difficulty, a little bit. Poor Maurice kept failing his fails, uh, his, his, his uh, ability checks. So uh, anyway, we reach to the top of the volcano, gaze down into the caldera, Zadar falls in, uh, throws the objects into the, the live volcano. Suddenly then there's this reaction and then silence. Take over the edge. The caldera, caldera is completely solid now, <laughs> except for one little caveat. The package is embedded in the, <laughs> in, into the uh, surface of the caldera, <laughs> the, uh, the, yeah, on the top of what was the lava. Anyway, so- I'm a jackhammer. Exactly. So we spent a lot of time, way too much time, trying to decide what we were going to do, if we we're going to crawl down into the caldera or not. <laughs> So we end up going with our against our better judgment. I mean, everything we were debating for everything to set up like Maurice being up being the guardian of this volcano forever to protect this package and just leave it in there. But no, no, Maurice decides to go down and saying, "No, I think I can whack that out. We can get it." And so, um, yeah, yeah. So he commits to doing that. Yeah long rolls into ability checks into that <laughs> we find a plethora of diamonds embedded in in the sides of the volcano and uh yeah so zadar against his better conscience goes along with the with the idea with maurice to get this package out of there well well through some trying maurice and zadar got it out much to their own detriment. You can see how this, this pans out. Just as we were walking away, steam, uh, steam starts erupting from where the package was and all hell breaks loose. Uh, yeah, smoke, fire, suddenly a demon. So yeah, we had that to deal with. So uh, yeah, with our group not being too combat effective or whatever yeah that that fight was pretty painful. deadly it was painful and it was deadly <laughs> started to relive all the bad character choices i made with creating this character so <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh yeah so uh it culminates in, in a fight uh we end up uh destroying the demon but as we do so the caldera crumbles and yeah it's a live volcano and it's a race to get out of there we've got we make it to the top but uh during this whole thing when we were fighting the demon our minotaur buddies showed up and started hauling rocks hitting maurice rather than the fire demon <laughs> anyway we get it. The episode ends with uh, the Minotaurs taking us uh, away. One's got Zadar strapped his, you know, thrown over his shoulders and they're running down the side of a volcano. Anyway, Zadar, it ends with, wait, should I throw this back in or what? <laughs> so that's pretty much how the episode ends. It was supposed to be our last episode. Obviously, it's not. <laughs> so don't know how much longer this is go, gonna go on, but it is exciting. So you should stay tuned and watch. And yeah, that's it. Back to you, Kyle. <laughs> I am definitely gonna have to go back and watch that one just to see how that ends. I'm just, just wondering all, how many cliffhangers the, in a row Frank can pull off. Yeah, all exactly. the dumbassery <laughs> <laughs> between me and uh, Carrie. Oh my God. So, uh, yeah, you could fill up a clown car with all that. Mm -hmm. Mostly oh, yeah. from Carrie's end, I'm fairly certain. But... <laughs> yeah, she's not on. The she doesn't watch this, so it's fine tonight. <laughs> oh, Unless man. Frank tells her, and of course, why would he do that? 
Yeah, why would he do that? Yeah, <laughs> sure enough, I know. All right. Uh, last Saturday, we did not have a uh, one shot going on there. Uh, unfortunately, medical issues popped up, trips to the ER, and all that fun stuff. Uh, send me all your sad comments and likes. Uh, oh, I have no. a new hole to play with now in my arm. It's fun. Oh, anyway. <laughs> I didn't know that happened, man. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, however, Margu also did not appear on Sunday as the Franks were mostly missing. Uh, however, a one shot mm-hmm. occurred uh, titled Loggerhead. Um, essentially, uh, I don't know who watched, who played. No one here? Neither did. Neither did. <laughs> well, then I will just tell you snippets and you'll be like, wow, that's so amazing. It is. Uh, well, for first of all, it's a B-side. I don't think Margu's had a B-team before. So I'm not sure. I could be wrong. So I don't... They've been on longer than the rest of us, actually. Mm-hmm. So it's possible. It's possible, but... Well, the group gets betrayed, their shit taken, they wander into town, try and find the person who screwed them over. Uh, and as is Frank's style when he's pulling stuff out of his ass, there's a lot of pop culture references. There's 27 pop culture references. And if you can find them all and tweet at Imhobo Inc., we'll send you a set of awesome dice. Is this something random that you're throwing out there, Kyle? Or do you know for a fact there are 27? Guys, Gotta I'm find a professional out. DM. <laughs> You'll have to watch to find out. Yeah, You'll have to tweet Mhobo Inc. to find out if you're actually right. Or if you're actually going to get a set of dice. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe. That's just the rules of the game. You'll have to find out. Uh, But that is last week. We talked about this week. And so now we enter the arena. Iron DM CSI. I'm pretty sure if I do that so badly, then uh, we can't get copied. I take it that is a random theme. That is not a CSI theme. Or anything yeah. like that. I yeah. don't know. Mm. I've never yeah. seen the show before. I thought it was the that. Hill Street Blues theme. Shoot. <laughs> I thought it was the Sanford and Son theme. Ba-na, ba-na. Oh. I can't do it. No, you can't do it. You're getting me off topic. <laughs> All right. Uh, tonight, these DMs uh, actually got a little bit more time than I, we usually give them. Because I'm turning them into (laughs) criminal masterminds. And while they've had the opportunity to look at the outline for this particular show for hours, they didn't Mm -hmm. really get down to it until about 15 minutes ago. Plus... Every prep uh, session ever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) This is the real DMs show right here. And so... uh, Gosh, if I had a set of dice, I could just, you know, roll a set of dice. Instead, I have poker chips. Ah, here we go. Uh, we'll do number one because uh, Dave is the number one uh, cast member on all shows of Murder Hobo Inc. And mm-hmm. Rob has the number two best character showing up in any campaign ever. Uh, mm-hmm. Dewey Dockmel being number one. But of that's course, just, of course. That I is, might be biased. Good. You may be. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially they have had to plan a campaign or not a campaign mm-hmm. i apologize a one shot two shot or at least a small adventure uh surrounding a single crime and so i imagine that we start where our pcs start at a crime scene uh and so david what's your crime and what's going on okay uh, well, uh, I guess, uh, I'll have to set it up, uh, how it yeah. is, but the crime is murder, murder in the most bizarre way. So, uh, murder um, mm-hmm. so murder is pretty much, uh, how it starts, whether it'll be the initial murders that happen or a series of murders that end up culminating throughout the 
the investigation remains to be seen. But uh, are we going to set it up to what, like how this happens or where, or the crime scene itself or. Nice Dave, follow the outline. How's it going? Yeah. I am looking at the outline. So. Yeah, I okay. know I'm all over the place on the crime scene. So the crime murder, mm -hmm. our PCs at some point are going to show up to the scene of the murder. Oh, they're part Walk of the scene. Through. <laughs> it, oh, they're part. Oh, does the murder mm -hmm. happen while they're in the room? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going. Uh, okay, I gotta set it up. Okay, set it up. Set yeah, it. You up. gotta set that up. Okay, you, you and your bunch are finally in the golden years of your adventuring. You've decided to settle down. You have all the money that you could want, whatever. But you decided to keep it urban, so you're kind of you know you're settling into like a village or a town or something like that. Uh, you find a great Conan place. Doyle Society. You you find a great place. Uh, it's lovely. It's it's a place that you've run through before in in your campaigns. Thought it was beautiful. Thought the community was great. Uh, the the region and what it said uh, that it's. Uh, that it takes place in. You've even done work for the monarchy that rules over this area. So uh, this is the fruits of your reward. So you have a villa that you're, you're settling down in, but in the way that it's set up, it's set up in like a cul-de-sac area where there's several villas. It's almost like a, like an end or a district in water deep, you know, just, you know, villa, you know, green space, villa, green space, you know, common area. Well, there's there's been a uh, a party, uh, a festival uh, of whatnot of the cul-de-sac. Kind of call it like an HOA party. <laughs> so, <laughs> and okay, yeah, and you know, you're settled. You're you're in a nice area. You're in an area with uh, some lords, ladies, rich merchants, and and the like, and you know, guild artisans, and it, you're having a wonderful time. There's a maypole. Oh my God, they're dancing around and stuff like that. There's refreshments, there's cobbler, there's, you know, there's ale. There's just, it's wonderful. It's a what perfect day. What do shoes day. have to do with it though? What does what? What do shoes have to do with this party though? I don't know. I guess you'll have to find out. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, continue. Okay. So uh, yeah, uh, it's a beautiful day you know the day ends it's the evening you know it's it's twilight it's settling and all that you're going home from your villa you know to your villa you know you see your neighbors you're saying good night to everybody and as you're going into your villa which is next to you know uh a merchant and his in his midwife wife are um heading in at the same time when suddenly out of the sky, <laughs> a ball of fire just comes rocketing out of the place and just smashes into the villa itself, destroying the villa. You have to roll to see whether you're injured in the blast too. Yeah, the merchant and the midwife, of course, are killed. Others are hurt, you know, that were still outside. And yeah, it is now an active crime scene. <laughs> so that's the setup. <laughs> All right, very nice. Uh, pretty dope. Rob, let's go over to you. Set me up a scene of a wonderful crime. What are we dealing with? Well, first, I want to kick you just a little bit of my thought process on it. When I saw this email earlier, it was CSI. So I decided, like, um, being a good DM and using the tools that are naturally at my disposal, mm -hmm. I typed up a CSI episodes list, pushed a randomizer to grab an episode took the plot synopsis and stuck it in my brain for a few hours. And then 15 minutes before we started, I wrote it up. So um, this is CSI big water. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a big water. It's, it's a entertainment and, and, and thrilling resort area next to a bustling mercantile city on a bay. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, the players or investigators somehow tied to the 
officialdom of the city in one way or another. But the uh, brutally tortured body of a tobacconist is found uh, in his shop when his assistant arrives to work. And um, the players are then come to investigate the crime and have to seek out their clues. Uh, they're at, but he's been like brutally tortured and it's messy. Still breathing or he's a goner? Totally toast, babe. Totally toast. Totally toast. All right. I think I was going to ask. In fact, you could say he got smoked. Oh. Dang it. Ah. <laughs> oh, how I wish I had more impaired vision so I could do those things. <laughs> Okay, nice. I was going to ask David this question, but since you're bringing up a murder, and I think mm -hmm. I could answer David's question for him, we are dealing in a fantasy world where there is spells like Speak with Dead. Obviously, I'm sure you've mm -hmm. thought of this. Mm -hmm. uh, David's character obviously burned so badly in a fire that you're not talking to his dead body. Nope. What is stopping the clerics talking to your tortured uh, uh, they'll be able to if they investigate it uh, determine that a uh, with suitable arcana, arcana checks determine that a ritual was done to uh, destroy the soul of the man oh, that that burn, there's... burn so hot there's, there's no no he was no just tortured but yeah yeah, there's there's remains with this guy lots and lots of them but um, his soul has also been destroyed and is unable to answer the call. Okay. Um, so when I like, as a DM myself, setting up an investigation for the players, one of the things I like to do is I want to make sure that there is a completely, utterly obvious clue, and then as the players search the room, a certain DC will reveal a new clue that may lead them somewhere else, and there's an even harder to obtain clue that might lead them more in a straight line towards the end. Um, yep. What do you've got? Uh, this ritual is, I assume, one of your clues. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, that that's one of the clues. And and I kind of I kind of made two uh, moderate DC clues, and that's one of them. That one's a, that one. I would put it about a DC thirteen or fourteen on the Arcana check. True. Um, and, and if they get a lot of higher than that, I'll give them a bunch of bullshit specifics to go with. Um, right. The DM know. tricks. And, and then, I mean, the, the, my obvious clue is that this, this tortured body and that there is a pair of bloody tongs, um, like um, soldering irons that, that are also have skin and blood burnt onto them and a peculiar knife, kind of like an Ulu knife that was found at the scene. Uh, those are like right there with the body. This, the killer let, took no cares to remove the means of murder at all. He somehow like uh, got in, knocked the guy unconscious, tied him to a chair, tortured him to death, and then enacted a ritual to destroy his soul. All right. Let's see. Okay, back over to you, David. Uh, mm -hmm. Your players have recovered from this fireball, most certainly a Maybe mm -hmm. a meteor shower that just took out Could the be some meteor. <laughs> uh, I mean, what are the signs that this wasn't just a odd coinkadink that a wizard tower just accidentally threw a fireball spell while teaching their apprentice? I mean, serious, that's manslaughter. <laughs> I mean, that can't What turns happen. it into murder? <laughs> what turns it into murder is that uh, that high of magic or whatever is really frowned upon uh you know in this in, in within this kingdom i mean it's kind of like water deep there's rules you know about magic and something like that you know is uh there's no accounts of like an accident or anything like that you know uh some kind of arcane accident so uh, when the city watch shows up they're, they're able to determine uh, some of that, that, you know, of course, this is the arcane, it was fireball or meteor uh, summoned here to this spot. Um, the only thing that they're trying to do is look the city watch. And uh, of course, yourself, you're taking an interest in your, in your party, you're taking an interest in it too. You're, 
you're going through the debris to just try to find out, you know, why, why, why this merchant, why this, this midwife, I mean, everybody else, you know, there, there were, there are more, you know, uh, affluent, you know, members of this, this community here. And, you know, these are not very high up there or anything like that. And, you know, why were they targeted? So. Sure. Okay. So we're kind of ruling out the idea that mm-hmm. maybe it was a terror attack because right. it's hitting specifically two people and mm-hmm. then maybe just a little bit of shrapnel to some other people. Right. Meanwhile, there are large gatherings where, yeah, you could have killed a lot of people if it hit here. Mm-hmm. And there's the king's nephew over there. <laughs> He's a dick. Why isn't someone fireball <laughs> him? So well, they they checked with like any of the local crime syndicates and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and there's been no chatter. Only only the mention of there's been uh, some unknown party, uh, you know, spotted in town. Uh, I mean, when I say a party, I don't mean a literal party, like a an entity or a person. Sure. In okay. town, uh, surrounding strange crimes and things like that. Sure. So. And I mean, so talk to us um, maybe a little bit more in depth about your clues that you find. It sounds like we're talking to mm-hmm. witnesses to find out about this mysterious person. Right. Because uh, my first reaction was, man, if you fireball an entire house, you are you are burning a lot of clues, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, witnesses is a great way to get around that. Um, yeah. What are our kind of a little bit more difficult to find clues? Mm-hmm. Um, what's what's being a little bit more hidden by this ash uh, disaster that has occurred? Depending on the DC rolls and yeah. things like that, there'll be things that will pop up that could be like the red herring or something like that. Sure. But the 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 main clue that that's going to find is there's going to be a, a sin journal. I mean, it, it, most of it is destroyed of uh, the recordings of pregnancies and live births within uh, the city and the community or the kingdom, uh, okay. you know, from this midwife. Uh, there's also an unidentified signet ring of a house that nobody's, nobody's heard of. Okay, yeah, no, that sounds interesting. At least in recent history or anything like that so Mm -hmm. so we're assuming maybe uh uh, the ring itself or any one of the names of uh showing up into this midwife could lead to uh uh, some red herrings Mm -hmm. um we won't get into the motive until later on so we'll ask a little bit more about that uh uh dave how about you did you have any I like the idea that the ritual uh, uh, destroying a soul, that is certainly a twist that you never expect uh, um, uh, in a murder uh, in CSI land, but certainly in fantasy land. Um, Do you have any sort of red herrings or extra twists uh, tied on to this to make it feel more fantastical or just to lead the players into exploring a little bit more of the world, even if they are going in the wrong direction? Yeah, that was just my version of like washing down the scene with chlorine. Yeah, sure. All right, then. Uh, your players find the clues, uh, and we end up going to a second scene. Where do we end up? Are we in the middle of a chase after finding something? Do we arrive on a second crime scene, or are we perhaps arriving in a hideout? Uh, we started with David last time, so Rob, why don't you continue a little bit more? Okay. Well, back at the first location, I have a fairly low, like a DC 10 investigation check to reveal a bunch of papers Mm -hmm. um, that will let them know that this dude's a foreign national and that the country he comes from has been embroiled in the civil war for ever. And there are lots of refugees from that country in the city. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a lot of names that crop up in this of other people from this foreign country that did business with him. But there's also, if you get a better DC investigation check, you'll find his secret address book, which will narrow it down 
and lead you directly to the second location where they'll find with not immediately uh, knowing just upon like beating on the door or whatever, they're not going to get an answer. If they enter it and investigate, they'll find two more bodies. Um, and and there, these bodies were not tortured the same way. Some checks will show that they'd been drugged uh, and, and probably interrogated before having their throats slit. Uh, but the same ritual has been used to destroy their souls, leaving them unavailable as witnesses. Uh, so they can also in this location find a trap door that leads to, to go along with your second crime scene, a secret lair where they discover the link between these guys and the other dude, which leads to the motive behind the killing. So I don't know if I want to stop right there and let you ask no, questions. No, no, that sounds good. Um, let me ask a little bit more about the second location. We say no one actually uh, uh, opens the door. Is there someone in the house while the party is there? Well, this second location is a tenement building, and there are neighbors that they can talk to to get information mm -hmm. that I'll steer them to opening that door and investigating that apartment. Oh, okay. All right. Very nice. Um, mm. Mm. Eh, we'll save that question for a little bit later there. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, second location, David. How are we getting there, and what is it? Okay. Uh Turns out that there is uh, another murder that the party gets alerted to because of the coincidence of what the, the watch had found at this second murder. Second murder and going through the personal belongings of the victim, one of the things that they turn, turned up is a brooch with uh, the same signet or same crest that's on the signet ring that was found in the fireball house. <laughs> so, so there, so the party and the watch determined that these two are connected. And again, it was all uh, preceded by, you know, suspicious character seen around the area or something like that. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we find a brooch at this location. Do mm -hmm. we assume, are we assuming the brooch is part of the victim or that it mm -hmm. was left with the victim? Okay. And, and it's, it's assumed that it's part of the victim. And uh, what it was, was uh, a lonely uh noble merchant that kind of haversfammed himself you know after his his wife and child had passed away according to talking to other people that knew of him and and um you know that you know it was tragic that uh not long after this man and his wife had you know uh relocated to this area or moved into this area mm -hmm. uh the the wife and child had had died they're not sure of the circumstances of which they died but and then this guy just shut himself off from the world you know kind of just had things brought into him in for him and stuff like that you know obviously wealthy enough to support himself all these years without actually having to go out you know go out and you know sure. seek trade or anything like that okay. so i may have missed it so i just wanted to clarify this mm -hmm. is a previous murder that the signet ring attaches itself to or the fireball murders happen and then someone calls in about you know mr haversham mm -hmm. uh uh is now we've just found him dead um and what's the connection i guess um, uh the only connection is the the crest the crest on the ring crest. matches matches his okay and so was this um before the fireball murders or after the fireball murders yeah, they're working it out but they determined that it's after the fireball murders so, oh okay all right yeah um 
man, at that point, you know, uh, just sorry, and I'm thinking about it, and I might be mm-hmm. slipping over bounds. Like, yeah, Mr. Haversham's uh, house could easily be overlooking where that fireball, great, great way to target the fireball murders right there. But mm-hmm. that's you and yours. Um, what is making... Like I said, I'm thinking of this off the cuff, Kyle. You are thinking, <laughs> hey, no, no, no. I'm just saying it's like, oh, man, wouldn't that be just absolutely horrific and sad if the only reason this guy got murdered was because he had the perfect view to see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that like, was oh, it. Yeah. Hey, that how was you doing? I'm here to bring you your groceries and your soup, sir, so you have something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Fireball, run. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no um mm-hmm. we're in a hoarder's house um mm, there's a pretty much a lot yeah. of stuff there i well sorry you yeah. said haversham and that's yeah. where my mind went yeah that. that's that's kind of what it is so yeah. other than the fact that mr haversham is wearing a wedding dress uh which <laughs> maybe doesn't <laughs> we're stand going out with to that some kyle people. so okay <laughs> maybe doesn't stand out to some people stands out to me what that other isn't how it's set things? up, but let's go with it. Okay. <laughs> what other interesting things are the players finding uh, uh, in Mr. Haversham's home? Uh, other than uh, the, the, the clues that they found at the first, one of the things, the only thing that survived was uh, a few names of uh, families, uh, the parents, and the uh, uh, the children that that were uh, live birth. Uh, there, there's only like one legible name that's that's that can be read with the entry and the name of two children, twins that were born uh, to that particular family. But you can't tell from the charred remains of what house or who that that family actually was because part part of the name itself like the family name has been burned mm-hmm. by the fire but but there is a listing of a woman with two male sons mm-hmm. that are the clue that that are listed so and on top of this, <laughs> mm-hmm. there is a coronation going on, uh, or soon to happen within the kingdom. That's why there was a big ball and a how do you do along with the HOA, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. Okay, uh, let's... Are we having any more red herrings there? Um, are we saying... No, those this- are the... the- that's the about the end ones. of it. We got to get mm-hmm. to the end because, man, it's only two hours that you have to work with. We can't just throw yeah. red herrings left and right. Guys. No, there's not many. So, yeah. Okay. No, that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, this is to both of you. Uh, David, um, you can go first and we can continue this on here because it sounds like this may not be the final the final act uh or if it is um that explain to me how the final act is hopefully going to go down we're leading to who did it who Mm -hmm. done it how are we getting there go ahead okay well Uh, Basically, this is going to come to the ear of the royal family and the royal family wants, uh, of course, wants this investigated because if a fireball can come down, you know, in a so, you know, seemingly, you know, (laughs) innocuous area, you know, uh, this particular part of town wants to say a fireball can't come raining down on top of a, a, you know, coronation ceremony or anything like that right 
So yeah, the the royal family is definitely involved. But to set it up, uh, basically how it's going to culminate into the mysterious figure is going to be eventually caught. Uh, the king is like uh, uh, the royal family is actively uh, trying to either assist with the investigation, supposedly, but there are some obstacles that come up every once in a while. Eventually, the shadowy figure is apprehended, and you come to find out on uh, doing that, that I'm going to set it up. Uh, and this person's face is familiar. It looks like the prince that is about to get coronated. <laughs> So, yeah, the prince is, and the stranger are the twins that were in the ledger of the uh -huh. book. So what it was, was that the queen herself was barren. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the king or the royal, or this member of the royal family that ascended up to the, this, you know, eventually becoming king and, the son, you know, ready to be coronated, uh, that uh, he was a little bit of a secret philanderer and all that, mm -hmm. resulted in a pregnancy, depending on how that rolled went. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, you know, since the kingdom has no heirs, uh, supposedly not, but it's not general knowledge that the, the queen is barren, mm -hmm. but, you know, the queen finds out as the the mother supposedly offed and and the child and she took one of the children for herself as an heir so so obviously the mother and the child survived because here's the twin right here coming up for the the coronation or to stop the coronation ceremony you know, okay. and expose this conspiracy or whatever, you know, uh, given by the royal family or whatever. Okay. Kind of avenge. The uh, midwife and the merchant. The midwife was in on it or mm -hmm. has some knowledge. She needs to keep quiet. Yeah. What was Mr. Haversham's connection again? I'm thought. Well, supposedly. He was uh, going to be set up as kind of like the the midwife and the merchant. This this noble was going to be their uh, kind of like husband to this this woman to kind of give the semblance of a you know family you know up and up you know that gotcha. it, that this isn't this wouldn't have been you know, bastard or whatever. But anyway, so, but the, the, child, uh, the child and the mother or whatever, of course, uh, survived and they ended up, you know, becoming assimilated and part of this, this noble merchant's family. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's how it goes from there. So Okay. Uh, so it sounds like a showdown in the courtroom. Yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Back over to you, Rob. We Yo. have discovered two dead bodies, tortured ritual, uh, right. in a building, in a tenement building, and a trap door that leads down into a lair. Well, is the lair where it ends, or is there a no. shutdown somewhere else? No. Uh, I'll get you there quickly, though. The, uh, the, um, Sorry. <laughs> Whether they find the lair or not, they will find some clues leading them to a refugee aid organization. And if they find the lair, they'll find the immediate link because there'll be like the dead, the first dead dude's name and another name that links that is from the same place, but it's a different name. And then these other dudes will also have things there that link them to another name previous than the one that they're living under now. And there'll be some memorabilia from that place there. And also what looks like maybe multiple crime scenes right there in that secret lair. Um, but anyway, that leads them to the refugee organization where they interview people and find out that the original dead body, the tobacconist, is none other than 
a BBEG motherfucker who terrorized his and tortured his victims uh, in the same manner as he was tortured and killed back in the old country, and the other two dudes were his thugs. So that's the motive for the killing. And then the uh, refugee aid organization provides you with a list of suspects. Uh, down in that basement thing, there'll even be a list of uh, people with other information about the refugee or aid organization where some of the names have been crossed off. And if they go that way, they'll find out that they've all been either murdered uh, outright or killed during the commission of a crime or had some kind of a strange or uh, otherwise accident, not so strange accident. And in one case was considered to be possibly a suicide. But this gives you a thought to believe that maybe these dudes are here actually carrying on from the old country, taking out people who escaped. Uh, and it'll turn out that that leads you to who the uh, murderer is. And my outcome is maybe a showdown, but the characters are going to have to make a decision about whether they uh, turn over the information about the murderer or not, or let him go because the past tense tells you how the murder occurred. Uh, you know, he stunned the dude, tied him up and killed him. He drugged the other two guys, questioned them and murdered them. Uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm open on the resolution, but if the murderer gets away, the world's a better fucking place. <laughs> that is, yeah, no, that is good. Um, that's wrapped up quite nicely too with uh, exactly uh, my questions. Um, I tried to anticipate your questions in there. Dang it. <laughs> I said I'd okay. give it to you quick. You did. You did. Dang it. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this a little bit more. Say we want to integrate this into a campaign or into a future thing. Do you see a potential future where this um, uh, uh, vigilante, there you uh, go. I guess is probably the best way to put it, um, maybe starts to enjoy killing so much that he draws a harder line between good and evil, law and chaos, uh, to where he starts taking the lives of people who maybe don't deserve it as much as uh, uh, our original uh, victim did, or do you see that, you know, eventually the bad guys catch wind of who's doing this, and there's going to be another investigation where that second one was more my thought. The second one, all right. Like, you, like go. you go, you go and do that if you're doing it in an arc, and I, I can't write a two hour one shot. This yeah, no, like it's a, hard. Man. This is like a six-hour one shot. Maybe we do it two, three sessions. All right, I can handle that. But well, that could be um, like a Gen Con running thing for an right. urban investigation. And and I can go to the next episode that follows it up is when the vigilante gets killed. Yeah, and they investigate know. that murder. All right. Hey, I watched every episode of CSI Miami. I know you got to go two seasons down the road. You got to do a callback to that episode. Absolutely. No, you're you are correct. And it works even better if somebody involved is your child. Yeah. Yeah. That uh so that's really the low end of uh, uh kind of a world shattering event. Meanwhile, David, there's a lot of shit that you gotta hack through over that. I mean Yeah, like I said the I prince mean... isn't actually an heir to the throne and he has a twin brother who's murdering people. Mm -hmm. Ideally. We want this uh, twin brother to be captured, right. alive. Right. Um, what do you see as far as how is this affecting the kingdom? Is the well, party now sworn to secrecy um, or is <laughs> it going to be just released and this kingdom may it's just It's going to be apart? released and this kingdom is going to fall apart because, uh, because there are other houses vying for it anyway. Mm. But this is all predi uh, predicated by rumors and things like that that have that have come up like through the lifespan of this royal family. You want to sponsor us, Purell. <laughs> we need so, as much as we can get. The, mm -hmm. official, the official hand sanitizer of Murder Hobo Incorporated. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to unpackage. 
Kyle. So, but it comes to find yeah. out it's the royal family that was actually committing the murders and stuff like that to cover up the fact that oh. their child, uh, you know, soon to be prince, is not their son. The prince is, you know, the the soon to be prince is, you know, poor innocent little schlub. I mean, you know, and okay, so maybe I miss uh, yeah, the yeah. situation. The the mysterious figure just happened to be around trying to find clues as to everything about his origins and stuff like that because everything's been on rumor all um, right m night Shyamalan. i yeah, see your you twist go. now m night Shyamalan, yeah. ding dong but, man, so, so but at yeah. this point your party uh, once confronted has to decide because they could potentially uh snuff out the twin prince and mm-hmm. keep the kingdom going or they could uh, help protect this uh, twin um, and expose the kingdom for what it is I mm-hmm. absolutely love that choice ideally you know they help the innocent twin right um, does the uh, the prince soon to be king is he in on it as well or nope, completely no, innocent mm-hmm. yeah so. so you could potentially uh, uh, have twin rulers of a nation right if they can manage to hold the rest of the houses together yeah because the the twins are actually royalty I mean they're they're the progeny of the king's philandering so. Yeah. so they could co- co-rule together yeah. yeah and we could absolutely see clues scattered around yeah, there like, that it would if be they pick written it up better kyle <laughs> huh it Not, would be be a written you know it would be written up better oh yeah no so. no no i i get it i'm just no. talking about it and i was like yeah you could easily have where it's like yeah depending on how good your pcs are at finding mm-hmm. clues they could amass enough proof that these twin brothers are meant to rule and the other houses will fall in line because of it. Right. But if they don't, the brothers have nothing. Uh, they may end up getting murdered uh, or this country is going to fall apart. I love that. That sounds absolutely awesome. <laughs> Find, okay. Guys, you've heard the whole thing. I'm going to have to go over the spiel one more time here. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive, Imahobo Inc. at gmail.com or on Twitter if you want to hit us up. If you want to talk about more of this in the Discord, feel free to join us over there. Uh, we're always happy to have some chat going on uh, and maybe some new ideas for Between the Rolls. If you want to hop on to one of these things, I'm certainly getting tired of saying the spiel over and over. It's <laughs> two times, four times a week sometimes. <laughs> uh, if you're rolling like crap, uh, pirate dog dice is the way to get those awesome investigation tips to save the kingdom to quit wasting time and just go after that murderer before he goes after more people that yes. way you can maybe even help him commit a murder and a ritual who knows <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if your game stinks pirate dog dice uh has not pirate dog dice uh proof that uh you can polish a turd into a d20. Uh, and when that d20 turd starts to stink, Odd Fish Games is there to cover it up with putrid sewers. I mean, with prairie <laughs> flowers. That's with it. Libraries, with taverns, with amazing smells. And because obviously this d20 uh, poop dice is made from a cat, how better to support that and how to RPG with your cat on Kickstarter. Live now, join. Millions of dollars have already been pledged to it. Uh, and if not, then it obviously should be because you clearly don't love your cat enough if you don't. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Guys, again, we have Cred This Thursday. Awesome Gen Con offering of an urban investigation. How eerily similar will it be to one of the Scenarios Talk to Frank because he's the one who's already writing and taking notes. (laughs) Guys, these two will show up calamity uh, as they often are together as proof tonight. 
Uh, and then Margo B will Speaking end murder. on Sunday. <laughs> We're about to commit some more. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, so, guys, uh, hit us up on Twitter. We have two competitors, Cthulhu, Rob, David. I always forget your Twitter handle, so I apologize. D&Devious. D&Devious, D&Devious, D&Devious. Oh, it is D&Devious. Right, it's right there on the that. screen. <laughs> I didn't believe yeah, it, TRD strangely repair, enough. Man. Yeah, that's what I That was it. <laughs> So hit us up on Twitter. Oh, vote for whoever you thought had the best scenario. Honestly, I think they're both great. Give them some more thought, clean them up, and we would love to see them run uh, on these shows on one Saturday, hopefully sometime. Until then, this goose is cooked. Bye-bye.